hate to say it, but I think underestimated them. Um, and they they'd had a bit of a slow start in the season and we took that lightly, which is obviously the biggest mistake you can make in, in professional sports and sports in general. Um, so we absolutely won't be doing that again. Welcome back to MLR Mic Check. I'm Danny Wexelman here with Old Glory's Mungo Mason. Mungo, welcome to it. How are you? Very well, very well, thank you. All good. Yeah, big day of training today, so no, we're keen and, and looking forward to Toronto this weekend. So before we get to the match this weekend facing Toronto in Atlanta, I just wanted to touch on the fact that you play for the nation's capital, Old Glory, D.C., and despite the game not being in D.C. this weekend, you do have the opportunity to play for that team. It's July 4th this weekend, although you are Scotland-born, New Zealand-bred. Have you had a chance to reflect on on how cool that is no big time it's uh, it's unfortunate that we're not here this weekend because i've heard that july 4th in dc is just on another level um i'm sitting at our apartments at the moment we've got a pretty good view over the city and apparently the fireworks are just like yeah totally different story so would have been cool but um no down in uh, down in atlanta um and absolutely you know i think um a lot of the best things about the states um you know are, are exemplified in rugby um people sort of working together and, and trying to sort of one up each other and that sort of thing and yeah no I, I absolutely see some of the values come through um and it's really fortunate i say when people say oh what's it like living in dc i say oh, it's like being in a movie <laughs> uh every day you know um we myself and some of the boys on sunday night we got back and we went and watched the sunset on the steps of the lincoln uh, monument um, which is pretty special, you know, um, and you've you know, got tourists all around you. And, and it was just, yeah, it's fantastic. feels like you're in a movie, which is really cool. Okay, wait, let's let's talk about the monuments for a second, because I do think, I love DC. I love traveling to DC and I, mm. the history that just it, like envelopes you when you get there, you know, it was all around you, especially July 4th weekend. Despite not being there, what is it like being in the nation's capital and just kind of being around one of the places that kind of holds all of our country's history near and dear to its heart. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and I would go even further and say it's, you know, one of the epicenters of the world, you know, big decisions left, right and center come from, you know, come from DC. So that's that's pretty unique and special. Um, I'm, we're really lucky with how close we are to things. Um, so we're, you know, hop and skip over the bridge and we're right downtown, um, which is cool. And it's quite quite cool. Threaten, um, he's obviously one of the locals here, and he likes to take the boys on midnight uh, monuments tours. He he might start a little business. He thinks um, <laughs> so. You hire you know hire the the bikes um, and bike from monument to monument at you know twelve o'clock at night. Um, it's a little bit late, but it's pretty much deserted. Um, so you get these huge big monuments to yourself, and you can absorb it and reflect and. And really sort of understand a little bit about it so that's really cool um and you you know you had in the lincoln the jefferson martin luther king washington um african-american museum like it's it's really cool we're really lucky do you have a favorite one that you've either been to multiple times one that you couldn't believe you were seeing yeah yeah um uh, probably two-part answer um there's a, a scene a couple of scenes in a movie on the steps of the lincoln um Lincoln Monument, um, wedding crashes, <laughs> um, and also an old Clint Eastwood movie um, where, they're, where they're sitting on the steps. And it's quite cool. Not many people know about it, but it's like a little special trip that I tell people. And if you're sitting on the steps and you look down and inscribed in the um, in the marble, and it's really faint, you can't quite see it like particularly well. It says, on this day in 19, I can't remember the exact date, um, 50 whenever um, Martin Luther King um, he that's where he recited his I have a dream speech um, and it's just like goosebumps goosebumps moment um, and, and you can just visualize you know that tens of thousands of people all looking up at you and, and that's you know change change the course of the country so that's pretty cool that's one of my favorites I think a co-captain this season and I was hoping maybe you could elaborate a little bit on what that title means to you so I suppose the, the sort of the co-captain leadership thing is a really, really good platform um, for both Threaten and myself. I think we just, we bounce off each other really, really well. Um, and we fill the gaps in each other that um, <laughs> maybe the other one's not so strong. So yeah, I appreciate everything he does and, and hopefully it's the same way. So that's really, really cool. And it's a great relationship. For me, it's a massive honor. Um, I, I sort of tell people that um, to be a part of a, a literally ground floor organization to get to set the tone um mission ethos you know um and legend i suppose of old glory and mlr is pretty special and um, pretty once in a lifetime is 
you know, rugby clubs all over the world that have been around for decades or centuries, but to be, you know, at the, the ground floor um, of one is, is pretty cool. And to, to stamp your mark, I suppose, and set the trajectory um, is, yeah, it's quite a unique experience. Um, so being in a leadership position of that makes it even more special, Danny. Um, and yeah, really, really fortunate, I suppose, to be trusted um, from, from Coach Douglas to and the management and, and you know, leadership and all that to be put in that position. So yeah, I'll, I'll cherish the memory forever. Would you say that there's a person or a mantra that you follow when, you know, you, you are put into a role like this, or is there something that somebody passed along to you that kind of helps you become the best leader that you can? My own personal one is um, Semper Ad Maliora, which I know that the owners like, which means always towards better things. Um, so anything that you do, you're always sort of trying to be a bit better than yesterday or, or improve in some way. Um, so I suppose that applies leadership wise as well um, is, yeah, is putting, you know, others before yourself um, and trying to make it better for them than it is for you, I suppose. Um, so I like that. That sticks to me for, for most of my duties. All right. So this weekend, you all take on Toronto in Atlanta and the first meeting didn't go as planned. But what did you take away from that game and what are you most looking forward to on Saturday? They did pull a number on us um, early in the season um, and that, yeah, they're fantastic. We kind of hate to say it, but I think underestimated them um, and they that had a bit of a slow start in the season. And we took that lightly, which is obviously the biggest mistake you can make in, in professional sports and sports in general. Um, so we absolutely won't be doing that again. Um, and we, yeah, we learned some really good lessons from that um, in terms of their sort of their key role, um, key roles in their team. And I think the, the one of the really good things about Toronto is they they don't seem to have any super superstars, but they're really really cohesive and join as a team, and everyone works for each other, um, which I admire. So it'll be interesting this weekend. Um, we know they'll be a dangerous beast, um, and we just we're, we're focusing on ourselves. We've had a, a tough couple of games. Things haven't kind of gone the way we've wanted to, but we know that it comes down to us this weekend and we have to gel and, and, and sort of go from there. I'm going to brag about you for a quick second, but I, I have a point <laughs> to it. So in 2020, you led the team in tackles and carries and you were one of five guys that played all 400 minutes in 2020. That was before the shutdown. And I just wanted to know, you know, what do you attribute your successes to? Is it a person? Is it something that you work at? Um, you know, what are the, what are the things or who are the people that have helped you become so successful in the sport? Hmm. Absolutely. Um, so it's a couple of things, I suppose. Um, I reflect pretty much every day how fortunate we are as, as professional players. Um, you know, we, we get to <laughs> put on boots and run around with our mates all day. Um, and there's hard parts of it, obviously. Um, and there's big sacrifice and stuff. But, you know, when you reflect in comparison to some other people's situations, um, that has to give you a bit of motivation, at least to enjoy the moment and do the best that you can for both yourself, I think, and, and those. And then a person, um, hmm, that's a good question, Danny. Um, no, I think it's a, it's a whole bunch of people. I love the boys. I love being around the guys. So, yeah, <laughs> a bit cliche, but they're, they're my motivation, I suppose. Yeah. Who's, who's the guy that you spend the most time with or that you feel like you've learned the most from? I'd say Callum, um, Callum Gibbons has been really, really good. Um, our sort of our, our defense coach and and player player coach he's been fantastic just the amount of knowledge he's brought um yeah he's a really really good guy um, i'm not sure if you, you've spoken of but just sort of the earth awesome dude um really humble great dog <laughs> um ronnie and yeah so i get on really well with him um james king um hooker from australia he's an awesome guy it's it's yeah it's, it's cool lucky lucky group i usually rank my friends by their dogs as well so they... yeah, well who doesn't i mean <laughs> All right. So I was reading about your mom, Helen. I wanted to spotlight her a little bit and what she did during 2020. So she led the coronavirus response for the Department of Health and Human Services in Victoria. And I, I can't imagine what she went through or, you know, just how resilient and strong she had to be, as well as just being a leader. So I, I assume you could probably get some of that from her. But can you tell me a little bit more about her and, and what that was like for her? She's massively inspirational for myself. Um, she yeah, sort of grew up in, in Africa and um, single mum, three daughters and moved to New Zealand, which is where I grew up and, and spent my sort of childhood um, and, you know, started um, started as a nurse, like a, at a retirement village and worked her way up over the course of 20 years, um, which is pretty inspirational onto a job that no woman had had before. Um, and then, yeah, moved to Australia and and it was tough. Um, yeah, no, she, she absolutely had a tough time. Moved to Australia and it was the bushfires. I don't know if you remember in, in 
2019, 2020 was the bushfires. And so she handled that. And then like a month later, Corona, <laughs> Corona happened. And then it was just like full go Corona. Um, and yeah, and w- when I talk about like how lucky I am to be playing rugby and, and putting on boots and stuff. And then I reflect on mums, you know, at the desk running meetings and conferences and, and just working these ridiculous hours and helping all these people. So yeah, she's pretty, pretty inspirational and I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. Yeah. Your mom sounds like the real MVP and I, I can yes. tell like how important she is to you. I love to spotlight the moms. I feel like they don't always get oh, yeah. the credit they deserve. So I'm glad we could give a little spotlight to your mom, Helen. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, my friend, are you ready for some bonus points? Hit me, always. Okay, number one, who has the best hair on your team? Ooh, um, it has to be Threaten. It has to be. It's just that flowing mane. I love it. And I can't vote myself, so can I, so. Well, my next follow-up question <laughs> is, are you growing your hair back out? Will it continue to grow or are we just maintaining right now? Uh, it'll continue to grow. Yeah, I, we'll we'll see. We'll see what um, the consensus is. But yeah, I, I don't mind it. I think the kind of the chill, long-haired guy look is working at the moment. So that's what I've been told anyway. Okay, my next one is: Who is your favorite U.S. president? Um, oof, I would have to say uh, Teddy Roosevelt. What about your favorite lunch spot in in uh, in town? Where do you go? Where do you head up? Good question um there's a cuban joint um colada which is really really good cuban sandwiches um, on a hot day that's really really nice um navy navy pier is really cool it's right on the water um good oysters and that sort of thing so yeah one of those two i'd say all right what about a food from home that you would bring here to the united states Uh, well i've tried to but meat pies um that they're delicious and they remind you of home. A good steak and cheese. Um, so I think there is a Kiwi company here, but we don't see enough of them, which is a pity. Maybe maybe your uh, after, your post-playing days will uh, involve that. Mm, maybe, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> what about a leader that you look up to, whether it's somebody that's played sports or somebody outside of sports? Who inspires you? Ooh, okay. Um, good question. Wow. I'd, uh, Richie, uh, Richie McCaw obviously is always like great. Yeah, I, I, I suppose when we're thinking about presidents and prime ministers, Churchill, um, I, I like some of the stuff that he, he used to say, um, but I don't know if he's as applicable now. Um, yeah, but those two, they don't, they don't have much in common. <laughs> those are great answers. I will definitely take those answers. Absolutely. What about an activity that consumes your time when you are not playing rugby? Mm. Um, I love to travel. Um, yeah big big traveling um fan and i think that sort of rugby is really good because you get to travel but then when you're not with rugby um just having the opportunity to sort of immerse yourself in a culture um and learn that side of things in a different way of life is, is really cool i'm currently trying to get down to costa rica um which would be cool for for a few nights um before what at the end of the season um, if, if all goes to plan athlete that you would trade places with for a day mm. i like it um tom brady would be pretty cool um but if you're being like just why not what be a little bit weird um <laughs> what was his name who's the the weird but the weird kind of ish dude from the bulls rod um dennis rodman, rodman. dennis rodman yeah why not get a bit crazy <laughs> love that that's a great answer oh my gosh okay what about your favorite post-game meal um sushi something nice cool cool down unique i love it okay uh what's the story behind your name mungo um so i was born in scotland um and mum and dad were obviously over there and the patron saint of uh sorry i've got a (laughs) family of pool players behind me um the patron saint of glasgow his nickname was saint mungo so it's technically after saint mungo yeah amazing I love that. Okay. My last one for you is one thing about you I cannot find on the internet that I have to know. Okay. Um, no. uh, after rugby, I would like to run a business related to sustainability or sort of eco entrepreneurship. There you go. 
Nailed it. Something along those lines. Yeah. Wow, you're just gonna continue to make the world a better place. We love to see that. That's very <laughs> cool. Following in your mom's footsteps. Mungo, my friend, I can't thank you enough. I wanna wish you good luck this weekend. Hopefully you get to enjoy some fireworks too, even though you won't be in DC. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll get to see some. Absolutely, uh, thank you. And some barbecue would be good as well. <laughs>